Hello, Miss Smith. Uh, I was greeted when I first came into Midway High School with a temperature check, a scan. Tell me a little bit about that stand there. Well, it's a new device that we have here that when people enter the building, they come in and they go through the COVID screener checklist and they stand in front of the machine and it checks their temperature as they enter. Okay. And so if they have a fever, they will not be allowed to enter to past enter that the point. Building. Yes, now, sir. is this just for them, of course, for all visitors yes, to the sir. campus? Yes, uh, sir, our students visitors. will be doing a self Yes. Uh, monitoring. Yes. Not, not, not every student will not be going through. They this. will not be. Right. They okay. enter through a different point. So. All right. Uh, and then I also noticed those great circles. So I assume that as visitors come in, um, that's a way to keep the six feet, the social distancing, the physical distancing. Yes, sir. We have um, implemented an inside the building as well as in our oh, foyer. Okay. And so it's a six foot distance. And so basically they just step up just like you would if you were at the grocery store or any other location okay. in town. So we've installed plexiglass um, on all of our reception stations, both here in this main reception area as long as, and as well as the circles. Okay. Uh, we have those also in our counseling office and in our nurses station. The attendance office has now become a full blown nurse's station. Okay. Um, but all of our um, receptionists, they have these lovely pieces of glass just as an extra okay. protector. Very good. So, Ms. Smith, this looks a little different coming into what was at one time both the attendance office as well as in the back our nurse's office. So, it appears that this whole area is now dedicated to health services. So, why don't you tell me a little bit about yes, sir. the changes? Yes. Um, so we have now made our front, atten what used to be the attendance clerk's desk here, it's now um, one of our nurses will be stationed here and they will decide if you're going to pick up prescription medication, which is now in an office that's behind here. And then if, if a student reports here because they're ill or not feeling well, then we will keep our normal nurse's office, what was the old one, um, basically our sick bay. If okay. you're sick, you go in that, that All right. area. So let's take a look at the sick bay. So Ms. Smith, now we're inside the nurse's office. Sure. And so I was just curious about when, when students are feeling uh, ill or, or having possible COVID symptoms, where are your isolation rooms? Sure, we have those. two of them. So we uh -huh. have one right here. Uh, there is basically a bed in here for students okay. that can be cleaned between students and right. pillowcases changed. And then we have a second one over here that has access to a restroom. Uh, so if a student's feeling ill and that's a symptom, they can move in here and, and right. be close to a restroom. So this is off the beaten path, if you will. This is, this is where students can have the privacy as well as to contain uh, the possibility of any spread of symptoms yes, or if they're off the, the beaten path of the high school and the hallways as well as the, the general po uh, population there coming to see the nurse maybe for medications or other yes, reasons. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. I think probably a lot of our students and parents are going to have some questions though about hallways. Sure. Because on, in a normal year we have on average about 2,400 students, don't we, here yes, at Midway sir. High School. Uh, we're anticipating uh, rounding a little bit though about 30 to 32 percent of the students are participating in virtual instruction. So that does uh, reduce the number of bodies here physically at Midway High School to about 60 percent, 65, I should say 65 percent, 68 percent of that. But in our hallways, what thoughts do you have in, or, in order to physically distance as much as possible our students as they change classes? So as students change classes, there will be an encouragement for them to stay on the right side of the hallway as they're heading to their next location. Okay. And um, so there may be some arrows that are placed on the floor showing them that exactly. And then also we're using all odd numbered hallways, which are the right hand hallways. Um, as the staircases on that side are designated for up staircases mm -hmm. and all staircases on the left side of the hallways are designated as down great, so that when they're great. going down the hall it puts them on the right side of the hall. So, so we'll just kind of keep I guess a, a nice flow of, of, of traffic if you will of yes, students sir. to kind of like the same rules as, as driving a car. Yes, stay on the right, no stay standing on the right. and congregating. You yeah. don't get to stop your car in traffic in the middle of traffic exactly. and so keep it's moving. going to be a, a big push on Keep moving, walk and talk as you're headed to your class. Great, as you're great. Thank you, chatting. thank you. Well, hello, Mr. Wheeler, Associate Principal here at Midway High School. Um, probably another question that our students and our, and our families are certainly asking about is lunchtime and how do we feed a number of students. And so behind us, I know we're still finalizing some cleaning and, and, and getting new air conditioning here at, at uh, Midway High School, but could you explain how uh, you all have decided to organize students during the lunch periods. Absolutely, so we've spread lunches out to, to really um, 
provide a lot of distancing for, for kids. Okay. And we actually have lunch in three different locations now. Used to, we were able to pack 800 kids in the cafeteria, all, the, all, all in this, into one, this one area. One okay. area. Okay. And, and now we're gonna be able to spread out uh, around 650 students socially distanced across these three different areas, starting here in the cafeteria, and our, and our theater foyer, and then our athletic foyers as well. Uh, in addition to what, the students that are in here that will be sitting at normal cafeteria tables, they'll have uh, red X's on seats that are not able to be, uh, to sat be used. In. Right, okay. right. And, and uh, we'll have uh, three kids per round table and four kids per long square table. Okay. And so where we were right. usually having eight to 12 students sit at a table and so. And what about any modifications to the choices students have for lunch? It's a great question. So our, our uh, uh, food services have done a phenomenal job in, in really still providing uh, a large number of selections. And, and it won't be that every student has to come to the cafeteria okay. and get lunch. Uh, we have mobile carts now where they'll be able to serve hot lunches in the theater foyer and the athletic foyer and okay. still here okay. right here and still offer the exact same options in all three locations. So the student does go down there, they can social distance down there and, and, and remain in those specified areas. Could you explain to me um, how we're going to organize students here in the, when they arrive to school? Um, as, as everyone knows, we're starting a little bit later this year. Um, and so as students arrive on campus, maybe how will they be allowed to have breakfast or, have, or wait for their first period class bell ring? That's a, that's a great question. When we, uh, typically in the past, we had around uh, 1,000 to 1,500 students and they all just kind of piled into the cafeteria and waited for the bell to ring. And obviously that, that's not conducive to social distancing and anything like anything like that. So similar to lunches, we'll have three different locations where students can get a grab and go breakfast. Okay, good. And they'll be able to, to, to spread out in the, in the arena foyer, theater foyer, and the cafeteria. For those students that aren't going to be uh, eating breakfast, they'll be, they'll be uh, socially distanced throughout this arena. And so we'll have teachers and staff in here to monitor. Tutorials and things of that nature are still available for students, so we're certainly gonna promote that as well, where we can push students uh, out into those particular areas. Okay, so they'll be here. We're utilizing them this, this nice large arena and being able to, for students to congregate in here so they're physically distant as they wait for their first period class to start. Very good, thank you. Now I am in uh, a typical Midway High School classroom and I have our current Teacher of the Year from Midway ISD as well as here at Midway High School, Ms. Uh, Vanessa Dulock, as well as Ms. Smith, our principal. And uh, we're in a speech communication class right now, but it is the size of a typical room. As you can see, I'm seated in a, an arrangement that Ms. Dulock is uh, proposing for the students that are face to face. But she has a quote up here that says, look at faces, not devices. Because in speech, you that's part of the curriculum is looking at someone else's face. And so I was hoping maybe Ms. Smith or you, Mrs. Dulock, could explain uh, what's coming for, to keep our students safe here in your classroom. Absolutely. So what we um, are going to be doing for professional communications is we're creating little dividers so that students are still able to face one another and okay. have those experiences that you need to have when you are communicating. All right, so Ms. Smith, why don't you sit down and so she can demonstrate, all right? <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we'll have all of our groupings in four like this, and then we're creating out of PVC pipe and clear shower curtains dividers that will still separate each student. So to give you a visual, there will be a PVC pipe running long ways and width ways, and then we'll have a shower curtain that divides each student. So across from them and next to them, they'll still have that divider there. And just to make it a little bit more lively, um, we do have different colors of spray paint that we're gonna spray paint the PVC pipe with so that we can still make it a fun, happy learning environment and not Great. just something that's sterile. Now I'm with uh, Coach Jeff Hume, as you all know, is our head football coach here at Midway High School, as well as the athletic coordinator. And uh, I'm sure questions on the mind of our students, as well as our parents is, how uh, are we going to manage uh, having sports in light of the pandemic and COVID-19 and, and also the UIL? So, Coach Hume, could you maybe just kind of explain to me some of the different safety protocols that you and your staff have uh, talked about, trained on, and, and are putting in place for our students? Absolutely. Um, the, one of the biggest things that we're doing is, is mandating masks. And, good. and that's uh, a big thing that we tell our kids. You go to volleyball practice, you watch what Coach Porter's doing. 
uh, if they're not actively involved in a drill, then their mask is on. If they're standing on the sideline of football, their mask is on, they're pulling it up. Uh, whether it's a mask like yours or it's a gator, gator. like mine. Okay. Uh, they're, if they're in groups having a meeting, their mask is on. That, so that's really the biggest thing we're doing. The other thing is everybody brings their own water bottle. Uh, we won't have the student trainers walking around. We won't have our big water cow out there we call it. So everybody's sure. grabbing that like right. they used to. Right. So everybody has to bring their own water bottle, has to be labeled. There's and kids really throughout the summer have done a good job of that. And so they're, they're used to that already. Now, if they haven't been coming in the summer, there's something they'll have to get used to. But like I said, they've been really good at that. Uh, emphasizing washing your hands, emphasizing you know, the hygiene part of it. Uh, we've been screening them before they come into the gym or in the MAC with the temperature. Now, are they filling out the survey? Uh, so we're always, we're always checking up on that and, and trying, to keep, trying to keep ahead of the game, really, when it comes to that. So. Where, where do you think, though, now, you know, the UIL with the 5As and 6A schools have come out, of course, that it's my understanding you can begin after uh, Labor Day, which would be the Tuesday, September 8th. Right. That's when the, the season starts. Right. Is that, now explain that to that for which sports and kind right. of clear that up. Well, it's, uh, it, it, it really depended on, you know, if, if you were still allowed to do strength and conditioning, which we are, then our first day of official practice can be Monday, actually, oh, September 7th. Okay. And so we will start that Monday morning. And so really the first two weeks of school will be really what we've been doing summer strength and conditioning wise. And so we really won't start practice until Monday, September 7th. Okay, uh, well, what about maybe volleyball or cross country, some of the other? Uh, cross country sports. has already started. Okay. Uh, and you know, just watching Coach Bowles this morning, matter of fact, uh, they're out there and you know, he's doing a lot of the same things that, that we just talked about. Coach Porter and them can start practice. Uh, uh, the first day of school. Um, I'm not exactly sure when they can start scrimmaging and things like that, but it's always a little ahead of football. Right. And so they'll be able to get started really b before football. And but they're starting the first day of school. You're they're start, they'll, they'll, they'll so start. They'll start. So everything is practice. delayed somewhat. Everything has been delayed, yeah. and uh, and really, I think what they're trying to do is just really get a gauge on what the what the smaller schools, how are they going to handle it, and really the big test is going to be when school starts. Right. You know, because. Uh, you know, we've been doing what we're doing in the summer and everybody's been really good about it. And uh, now, now we got to see how everything works when we got the kids on campus. And then final question, uh, in, your, in your opinion, um, how important are these extracurriculars to our kids? Well, I, I, I think they're vital and, and obviously I'm biased in that, but uh, you know, I, I truly believe in, the, in the, the complete overall student. And it's just not athletics, it's any extracurricular, it's, it's band, it's choir, it's a drama. You know, if, if the kids don't have that in the school, then I really think they're missing out on, on what the high school, you know, is, is all about. It's, it, it's really, you know, hey, the, the core class is obviously the most important. The English, science, math, all that is important. But, you know, the kids, they, they, they love to be in choir with the Rices. They love theater with Jill Wilkinson. And, and they love being in athletics with all the coaches and, and vice versa. The, <laughs> we love being around them and that's, you know, that's what it's all about. And, and you know, building those relationships like, like all those programs do, I think it's vitally important to, to our high school life. Well, Ms. Smith, thank you so much for taking me on a tour and showing me just a little bit of your Safe Start plan for uh, Monday, August the 24th. Um, could you maybe share with me how are your teachers and staff feeling about the start of school? Our staff are really excited. I think um, we've had enough time, just us in the building, and we are ready to get our kids back in there and, and get them back to the learning process. And so they're ready to roll come Monday morning, 8.30. Well, all right, we're looking forward to all of our Midway High School students returning. Uh, I bet they don't want to admit it, but I bet many of them are ready to come back to school. And so we look forward to seeing all of our students on Monday, August the 24th. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Thank you.